Good morning and welcome to the January 25th meeting of the Lextran Board of Directors. My name is Jill Barnett and I am the General Manager here at Lextran. I will turn the meeting over to our Chairman, Mr. Harding Dowell. Thank you, Jill. We'll call to order and call the roll. Uh, Mr. Ward. Here. All right. Uh, Ms. Boris Gonzalez. Here. Mr. Motley. Here. Mr. Schoeninger. Here. Judge Thurston is absent. Dr. Acapo. Here. Ms. Rogers. Here. And I'm here. Excellent. Um, we, uh, do we have any public comment today? All right. Seeing none, uh, has everybody had a chance to uh, review the minutes of the December 2022 meeting? And is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, Mr. Schoeninger moves. Is there a second? Ms. Boris Gonzalez seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, there is no chair's report today, and uh, and uh, owing to some time restrictions, I do want to amend the agenda to move uh, resolution 2023-01 before the performance report. So, uh, Jill, do you want to describe to us the agency safety plan? Yes, I'm happy to do that, and uh, thank you for entertaining the amendment of the agenda. So resolution 2023-01 is Lextrans agency safety report. Um, this is a requirement of the Federal Transit Administration that we submit and approve annually um, to the FDA. So for the board's knowledge, especially those of you who are newer to the board within the last year, um, Lextran does have an existing agency safety plan in place. So this plan itself is not new. However, the annual approval is a requirement of FTA. And as part of that annual approval process, um, it reaffirms the designation of the accountable executive and chief safety officer, as well as updates performance targets um, for our safety numbers and incorporates an updated budget number. So very, um, not many substantive changes compared to what you saw last year, um, but um, do need to get the board's approval for that. And our designated safety officer is John Gibbons, the director of risk management. Um, as our chief safety officer, um, and so he would be able to answer any uh, very specific questions that you might have um, about this plan. John, were there any changes to the safety performance targets from the last iteration of the plan to this one? There uh, were slightly uh, differences in the numbers, and that's due based on a five, we take a five year uh, data uh, of those events and uh, modify those rates based on each year's uh, injuries and events that occur. Those are the numbers that we have to report to the, uh, through NTD, which is the National Transit Database. So usually it's a, a slight uh, difference in the number, usually not major, unless you just have a, a terrible year in those numbers and events and injuries and those things. We've been pretty consistent over the last five uh, to seven years for those numbers. And as you can see there, it was a very small uh, change in the, uh, in the overall number for the five year data. The injury rate last year was 0.9, and this year has uh, changed to 0.72. I don't have the um, safety events or safety rate total uh, in mind, um, but I, that is something that John and I discussed and looked at immediately before coming down here. Um, but as he said, that um, that number is updated every year based on the, the five-year average. Okay, so is Table One past performance or intended future targets? It's intended future targets, but you base those on your past performance. Okay. So basically, we are uh, shooting for our injury rate of less than less than one injury per hundred thousand miles, mm -hmm. less than one safety event per hundred thousand miles. Yeah. And what is that system reliability number? That's what you're used to seeing in uh, miles between road calls when mm -hmm. we talk about that on our maintenance um, maintenance targets. That's just another term for it. Okay. So it looks like other than changes to the numbers and then a few changes changing out um, Red Cross. Mm -hmm. so made the change from, yes, thank and you our, for catching that. And our budget. Mm -hmm. I don't see any other No, there's no, no other substantive change. In the plan. Any questions from those joining us remotely? Okay. Then I'd entertain a motion to approve resolution 2023 01. Motion to approve. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Is there a second? Second. second. 
Dr. Capo seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks for that. We'll move on to performance report and financials, which I understand are going to be delivered by our general manager. Yeah. So performance report will be delivered. Um, delivered by me today. Uh, in Mr. Combs' absence, I will obviously defer to Ms. Lonkenberry when it comes time for the financials. So these numbers are a presentation of our highlights for December. Um, let me see if I can get the mouse to work here. All right. Uh, we serve people and our community with mobility solutions is the lecturing mission statement, and we do like to start every uh, presentation that we do uh, with that as a reminder to both the public but also ourselves. I wanted to go through quickly some highlights of the month of December. Um, at the first of the month, Lecturing transitioned from a software called iReport to Track It Transit, which is the electronic reporting of all of our vehicle accidents, incidents, and injuries. Um, so we uh, did have an electronic reporting system in place um, that allows our supervisors out in the field to use a tablet and input that data um, on site. We just changed the software that we were using for that. As we move forward, another thing that the Track It system will allow us to do is um, have another tool um, for reporting our customer, customer comments and customer complaints, so we will transition that um, in, in the coming months. Uh, later on in the month, we also enacted our winter run pick. Uh, for those of you newer to the board, uh, the run pick is when the operators have an, a chance to uh, bid on a new schedule um, for themselves. Mm. It's also the time that if there are any schedule changes um, for the public, those would take place as well. Uh, very minimal changes happened this time, but um, December is our typical time for a run pick to take, a, take effect. Uh, we also uh, celebrated our employees and celebrated the holidays uh, with random daily prize drawings the week before Christmas and also all employees received a gift card for Kroger. And we were able to bring back our trips to Southern Lights uh, for customer appreciation on December 21st. I had a good turnout for that, I'm able to take customers um, complimentary, uh, fair was complimentary as well as their uh, admission to the park. So we've worked with the horse park to do that for a number of years and we're really happy to bring that back uh, this year after, after a hiatus due to the pandemic. We have a couple of customer commendations for the month. Uh, one for John Bonziglia. The passenger said John does so well driving the bus and takes care of his customers. Our other commendation for the month was for Jason Brewer, uh, who the passenger said was very nice and considerate and asked them if they needed help when loading their cart on the bus. Um, quickly, we'll go through our ridership um, on our fixed route system. Uh, we were up by 24% compared to last year. Um, so very happy to see that we're continuing to have a rebound in our ridership. Uh, we were down from last month, uh, which is typical. You can see that from the chart that that is, is typical, that December is lower than November. That's due to a number of factors, um, including uh, less, less days that full service is on the street with the UK semester in place. Uh, we also have our peer transit ridership, which is down from last year, as well as down from last month, which is not typical. Um, it is typical on the fixed route side for, to see um, a decrease in ridership. In December compared to November, that's less typical on our peer transit side, um, and a number of factors that, that we think are at play there, um, and that is something that we're continuing to monitor um, closely, um, peer transit as a whole, not just in terms of ridership. When we get into our system productivity, you see the hard, uh, hard numbers for our ridership um, compared to how we are doing um, across the system. You'll also see that our uh, trips per mile and trips per hour um, were down compared to last month um, and down for the fiscal year. Um, that, that was due to uh, lower ridership as well as a decrease in the hours of service and miles of service that we operated. And again, that was partially due to uh, the UK semester break um, there was also holidays there, and there were also three days in December that we operated on snow plan due to snow and ice in, in some areas on our routes. Uh, this is not um, shown on this chart, but I wanted to make sure to highlight this, um, an improvement in on-time performance for both fixed route and paratransit. Um, on fixed route, it was 88.7 up from 87.9 last month. And on paratransit, it was at 57, up from 52% last month. And they are on track to improve for the month of January as well. So continuing to watch those improvements, um, or watch those changes, rather, um, week to week. 
On the safety side of things, I'm really, really pleased and happy to report that there were no accidents on our fixed route system in the entire month of December. So congratulations to our team in both operations and maintenance um, for, for a great month. We went 31 days with no preventable accidents there, so that's really exciting. And our operations department also made it most of the month of January, um, but had an accident earlier this week. So don't want to overshadow, overshadow the good news uh, there. Um, we, we had uh, 60 days, I think, um, without any accidents total, so we're really happy about that. Um, Paratransit, I believe, had one accident last month. Uh, they also went 30 days um, with no preventable accidents, so that was also really good to report there. <coughs> In terms of maintenance, uh, maintenance operated 7,804 uh, miles between road calls or uh, system reliability, as we mentioned earlier. Um, that was down from last month, um, and that's you know, due to a number of factors. Um, primarily, we had a lot colder, colder days uh, last month than we did the previous month, and having a bit of a, an older fleet, that does have an impact there. We also had some, some road calls out uh, during the snow and ice event, um, if I remember correctly, Chris. Um, and our maintenance department completed 59 of the 59 preventive maintenance inspections that were scheduled for the month of December, so they have continued their 100% streak um, for this time to really really pleased with maintenance uh, it continues continues to hit that number um, in spite of a lot of other challenges that they have going on in their department and that takes us into the financials and I will ask Miss Nikki Falkenberry our director of finance and HR if she will share those with the board good morning Good morning. Good morning. wanted to uh, Thanks, Stephanie, last month for covering for me when I had laryngitis, so at least this month uh, I have a voice. Um, if you look at page 14 of your board packet, that is the balance sheet. We are looking very good at this point. This is six months through our fiscal year. Operating cash is uh, staying strong at this point, and uh, there really are no um, big things to mention in the balance sheet, but I will be glad to answer any questions. Okay, we'll move on to the statement of revenue and expenses. Uh, property taxes on the, uh, when we did the financials, they were down a little bit. However, we did receive the check that we normally get in December. We did receive it the first week in January, and that was uh, 2.8 million. So we're right on track for our property taxes. Um, so uh, we also, passenger revenue is still staying strong. As Jill mentioned, the uh, ridership was down a little bit, but we still are over budget for the fiscal year. Um, state funds, we're still at zero at this point, but we have, uh, we should receive those within the next month. So hopefully when we do this next month, you'll see state funding on there. Uh, it's just a delay with uh, paperwork. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Um, our wages are still under budget and fringe benefits and professional services. Those are what we had talked about before with some of the bus repairs that we've, that's just a timing thing. Uh, materials and supplies are over a little bit. That's due to parts. Chris and I have talked about that. Of course, you know everything you buy right now is costing more, so uh, parts are no exception to that. Um, CNG, we um, talked about that last month. We under-budgeted CNG by a little bit, so we're, uh, we are over budget in that one. And the only other thing to point out is our paratransit expenses, which we uh, were expecting. But everything else looks good for the month, but I'll be glad to answer any questions. I have a question, Nikki. Uh -huh. When I, I know we decreased this, um, our passenger revenue historically was that around seven hundred thousand to a million. Uh, I used to be right at about a million every year. Uh, so for our um, budget this year, I think we budgeted about um, nine hundred, maybe nine hundred thousand. Uh, it used to be about one one million to one point three million. Pre-COVID. Yeah, it's still we're looking good actual the budget, but I was just curious. Right. Um, right. We are uh, we are back up. We're actually a little higher than we thought we would be this year, so we're pleased with that. And then remind me the state funds, what is the, you're saying we're waiting on it, but what is it that we're waiting on? Uh, state funds are matching funds for our uh, 5307 funding for things such as our preventive maintenance and our paratransit cost. And uh, it's a 20% of what we spend uh, 
federal is usually 80 percent, states uh, or local is 20 percent. Uh, so we have sent them all the paperwork and everything. So we should be receiving uh, 900, almost a million, 900,000, almost a million uh, in the next few weeks. And are we always guaranteed that match? Like that the state will pay our no, match? No. No, it's always, uh, it's always been, um, some years we received money, some years we didn't. 2020, we did not receive anything. Uh, they have come back the last, since we do not have toll credits anymore, the last couple of years they have given us a match, uh, but it's nothing that's guaranteed. And at the state level, they also do not employ, um, you know, our federal funding is based upon a formula, based on the size of, size of our metropolitan area, the, the miles and, and our ridership. That um, prescriptive process is not in place at the state level, mm. um, so so it's a, a much bigger gamble on the on the amount amount you will receive. Um, but but the past couple of years, they they have tried to to meet meet the gap that was created with the exhaustion of the toll credits. Any change? Like, is there a reason why or no? A reason why the state is now matching and some years they don't is it just um well so that they would 2020 was a bit of an anomaly and typically so when nikki says that there's some years we didn't receive anything that that is in terms of cash money mm. um mm, but, we got the toll credit. but we would get a toll credit a toll credit is not money that you can actually spend um but you know that that they have tried to replace that with cash money that that has helped agencies um, you know better better match some of their federal dollars better make capital purchases I mean it's it's really it's really important for all transit agencies but especially those rural agencies that don't have um, you know dedicated source of funding at all like like we do um, you know th it, that that really helped that the advocacy from from those agencies over the past couple of years about what, what the loss of toll credits would mean, um, you know, ha has been important. And so, you know, that, that's something that, you know, we, we've had to change our story a little bit because now it's not about the loss of toll credits because those are gone, but we continue to try to stress the importance of what, what does transit mean, not just to metropolitan areas like Northern Kentucky, Lexington, Louisville, but the smaller areas. It, it might not have um, the same economic impact in the workforce, but it means a lot where there are people who have chosen to, you know, age in place. They're, they're in rural communities, getting to health care and doctor's appointments. It's really important to those agencies, too. So we continue to try to tell that story at every, every chance we get. Um, whether there's any money tied to that, we, we never know, but um, never hurts to ask. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything on the change order report this month? We do have one change order to report, and I uh, must disclose I have gotten all of my pages completely out of order, so give me just a moment. Here we go. Um, so our change order report, uh, the contractor is um, Access Language Solutions. This is an agency that we have a contract with um, for our language translation services. So this uh, organization helps us with document translation, also, in-person translation services if that is needed, video translation if that is needed, and as well as phone assistance um, if we have um, someone who presents to our customer service line and needs language um, language assistance, we can kind of uh, conference them in on a three-way call. Um, nothing that we are actually using at the present time is increasing, but the contracted rate um, is going up for on-site services as well as a third-party platform which is a video translation um, that rate is increasing from forty dollars per hour to forty five dollars per hour um, when the, when or if that is needed in the future uh, mostly what we have used them for in the last couple of years has been the telephone translation service i think we've maybe used them for video once that no not even once okay documents, documents. and over Okay, so no, nothing that nothing that we are using frequently um, is increasing, but this is still something that needed to be reported to the board. Um, if this uh, reached a threshold that um, was going to be substantive, obviously we would uh, let you know let you know about that as well. Um, but this does not require any action from you; it's just an information item. Okay. 
Anything in old business? Uh, I do not have any old business to report today, um, nor uh, any any new business. Tell us what's coming um, in February. Right. In February, uh, I perceive that there will be two resolutions, uh, one for environmental services contract and another for voice over IP services. I do anticipate resolutions for those. Um, also anticipate uh, introducing the general manager for RATP Dev, which is our paratransit provider, um, and a recognition of one of their employees who um, went really went above and beyond uh, out in the field um, within the last two weeks, last two weeks, Byron, um, when they saw um, a young child at very, very early in the morning uh, by themselves. Um, for those of you who were on the board in April of 2021, a very similar situation to um, what happened and the actions taken by some of our fixed route operators. So um, really want to, you know, make sure that um, we have the opportunity to say thank you to that person. They don't work for us, but their vehicle says Lextran on the side. Their shirt has Lextran on it for the paratransit service. Uh, so want to make sure that we're able to, to offer our appreciation to them for doing, doing the right thing. And also just the opportunity to introduce that general manager to the board of directors. Uh, his name is Marlon. He is in place uh, working right now and has been since October, but have not had the chance to introduce him to the board. <clears throat> Looking forward to it. Uh, any need for closed session today? I do not. Okay. Uh, excellent. Then we stand adjourned and we'll see you next month on February 22nd. Thanks everybody. Thank you.